Hi everybody, I'm Miss Chris from the Stone Monroe Falls Public Library and I've brought some books for you today that are great for about fourth grade readers. Um, to start off, I want to tell you about our collection of playaways for the Harry Potter series. Uh, it's kind of a new thing we have um, before they were only on CD. So if you would like to check those out, if you like audiobooks, those would be a good listen. And now I'm going to start with um, nonfiction books. I brought two nonfiction today. This one's called Everest, The Remarkable Story of Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay by Alexandra Stewart and illustrated by Joe Todd Stanton. And it's a story about the two people who made it to the top of Mount Everest first. There is a little bit of history in there too about other expeditions that tried to make it to the top. And then there's um, more information at the end also about what happened to these two people um, after they made it to the top. And there's some great illustrations and some really neat maps and stuff like that. So if you're interested, that would be a good one. The other book I have that's nonfiction is called Humanimal, uh, Incredible Ways Animals Are Just Like Us by Christopher Lloyd and illustrated by Mark Ruffle. And this is a book about how animals are similar to us. Normally we talk about how animals are different from us um, and kind of try to make distinctions that way. This talks about things like community and language and things like that that animals might have in common with us that we don't even think about. So that is kind of an interesting one with some great illustrations. I'm gonna move on to graphic novels. This one is called Class Act by Jerry Craft. It's the second book. It comes out after uh, New Kid, which won the Newbery last year. And New Kid was all about Jordan. And this is still about Jordan. It's still told um, basically with Jordan in mind, but Drew is his really good friend. And um, this story really talks about more about Drew and how he's going through uh, school. They're at the same school, they're eighth graders, but they have slightly different um, experiences because Drew has slightly darker skin and people treat him a little bit differently than they treat Jordan who is also African-American. Um, so there's a lot about the microaggressions that go on in school, but it's also about just fun life that goes on in school. Um, it's a great, great book, just as good as the first one. This one is called Twins, and it's by Varian Johnson and Shannon Wright. Shannon Wright's the illustrator. Um, so it's a graphic novel as well, full color, just like Class Act. And this one is about two twin sisters, Maureen and Francine, and they have um, started sixth grade, and things are starting to change for them. One of the twins wants to kind of spread her wings a little bit, maybe not spend as much time with her other sister, maybe get to explore her own personality a little bit more and the other sister's not quite so sure about that and it's kind of um, there's kind of a contest in there um, they don't want to tell you too much about because it it'll spoil the story but uh, they're they always had the same friends and and how are those friend groups going to stay together things like that it's a really great book about family and about finding your own place in the world the next graphic novel I have is uh, when stars are scattered this one's by Victoria Jemison and Omar Mohammed, and this is about two brothers who um, have to flee their home and end up in a refugee camp in Kenya. And it's kind of about how they live their life in that refugee camp, what's it like for them, um, how they might be able to get out, how other people might be able to get out of the refugee camp and resettle somewhere else. It's also kind of a story about family because they're by themselves. They don't have their mother or their father. They're very, very young, very, very young when they um, get there. And there is a neighbor who just kind of steps in and that's kind of a really wonderful thing. And then later you hear more about her too. It's also full color and it's a really good graphic novel about refugees. The last graphic novel I have to share is called Diana, Princess of the Amazons. It's by Shannon Hale and Dean Hale and illustrated by Victoria Ying. And it's a story about um, Wonder Woman, basically, when she was little. And it's a story, not little, but you know, your age, basically. It's a story about Wonder Woman and she's really kind of, she doesn't have any friends. She just has her mom and like all the other women who live there, but none of them are her age and she just wants to do something fun. And so she creates a friend out of clay, and then chaos ensues. So see how she gets out of it by reading that book. The next book I want to show you, I'm going to start with a tween category. It's Tristan Strong Destroys the World by Kwame Mbalia. Um, it is the second book by Kwame about uh, Tristan Strong. It's just as good as the first one. It's absolutely fantastic. It's about Tristan and 
kind of what happens after the last book. So I don't want to go into too much about what it about that part because I don't want to spoil it if you haven't read it or listened to it, which I did. Um, it's a really good audiobook. But basically, Tristan finds himself in Alki, and he has to try to save someone who's very important to him. And a lot of his friends from the last book come come in. There are. West African gods and African American folk heroes, and it's really fast paced and really fantastic, but it's also got a lot to say about the um, African American or the African uh, diaspora, and um, it's just very, very fascinating and really, really good read. He is a great storyteller. This book can be the last book. I don't know that he has another one planned. It is wrapped up, but if he writes another one, I won't mind because there's still places to go. This book is called Three Keys. It's by Kelly Yang, and it is the book that comes after Front Desk. So you don't have to read Front Desk, but if you do, it sets up the story a little bit. You'll know the characters a little bit better. Um, it's a story about Mia, Mia Yang, and she is, no, not Mia Yang, Mia Tang. She um, is a sixth grader who, with her friends, is trying to right some wrongs. There's some things going on with immigration. This takes place in the 1990s in California. And they're trying to, I don't want to give too much away about the book, but they are trying to um, confront some issues that are happening in their community. They've got a lot of great adult helpers, people who are really willing to listen and who are really willing to go the extra mile for them as well. And um, there's a lot to do with her hotel as well, which was the main focus of Front Desk. Um, there's still a lot to do with the hotel where she works with her parents. The next book is called Stand Up Yumi Chung by Jessica Kim. And it's about a Korean American girl who really wants to be a stand up comedian. Her parents aren't really on board or don't even really know about it necessarily, or know about her um, absolute passion for being a comedian. They really just want her to do really well in school, take this extra class, and go to um, a prestigious private school. And so there's a lot of pressure for that. But there's kind of a little mistake that happens. She walks into a to a, a theater where a camp is going on for comedians and um, she gets mistaken for somebody else. And she kind of just sort of takes on that persona. And um, so there are some consequences that go along with that, but she also gets to really explore what she really wants, which is to be a comedian. So there's a lot of great family drama, a lot of good friendship uh, dynamics going on, and it's about a girl learning to find herself. The next book is called Manana Land by Pam Munez Ryan. And this book is about a boy named Max who doesn't know where his mom went. She left when he was really, really young. And there's a real mystery about that. Nobody will really tell him what happened. And um, he also just really wants to be on this traveling soccer team. And that is his like main goal. But his grandfather and his father won't let him be on the soccer team and he doesn't know why. And he tries to figure it out. And um, what he uncovers kind of leads him to figure out maybe what happened to his mother. And there's a lot of stuff about immigration and being a helpful person in um, and doing the right thing in this story. Really, really good, really well, beautifully written story. This is a book called A Wish in the Dark by Christina Suntornvan. And it is a Thai-inspired fantasy about a boy who was born into a prison. He didn't do anything wrong. He was in the prison. Um, because he was born there. And then there is um, a girl who's the prison warden's daughter. And when he figures out how to escape, she makes it her life's goal to find him and figure out where he went and bring him back. And so there's a lot of um, really deep stuff going on here as he tries to figure out how he can make his way. He has a tattoo that was um, put on him when he was really, when he was born basically, that um, marks him as a prisoner. So he can't really escape in a way that he can't, he can't really hide uh, unless he can hide that tattoo and nobody sees it. So he's got, he's got a lot going on that he has to, um, to deal with. And, but it's really a fun story too, because that doesn't sound very fun, but it is. It's really fun and um, he's really trying to figure out how he can get back because he left a friend there in the prison too. So there's a lot of um, movement and then there's a great, ending with community and the importance of community and standing up and helping others. So that's a really, it's a really, really good book. 
The next book I have is called Make Ways to Make Sunshine by Renee Watson, and it's about this girl named Ryan right here and her family and her family is kind of going through some changes her dad has to change jobs they have to move to a different house she stays in the same school which is good for her but um, but there's still a lot of other changes going on in her life and her name is Ryan and it means King and she wants to figure out how she can live up to that name that big name her parents gave her and kind of make it her own um, there's a fourth grade talent show she's a fourth grader and she has to figure out how she can do something that will make her stand out and be able to live up to her potential. And it's, it's really hard because sometimes standing up in front of people and doing stuff isn't that easy. So um, this is the first book in a series and it's really fun and really good. It's a pretty fast read and um, I really do hope she writes more because it's really good. And I have a couple other books. Most of these are new. Um, I have a couple books that are older that I can show you. Uh, this one is Ghost by Jason Reynolds. Uh, I always book talk this book and all of its friends. There are four books in this series that follow four different kids on this track team, all of who are dealing with um, issues in their own lives and their track team is kind of a family and they all learn how to support each other and learn how to get on with their lives and, um, and make track a part of it. And it's just great. Jason Reynolds is awesome. And that's all I have to say about Jason Reynolds. Um, Knights vs. Dinosaur is Matt by Matt Fallon, and it's one of three in a series. And this book takes place, um, well, kind of like in medieval times, I guess. There's knights and stuff, but then there's dinosaurs, so I'm not really sure. But um, basically, one of the knights has has said that he accomplished much more than he accomplished. So when dinosaurs come in and they're worried about the dinosaurs in the kingdom, they send a group of knights headed up by this, this knight who overstated his accomplishments to go and get rid of them. And it's really kind of funny because, you know, he, he really isn't that great of a knight. He just pretended he was. So there's a lot of illustrations. That one just says roar. <laughs> but um, there's a lot of uh, illustrations in this book. There's some knights being carried off by some by some flying dinosaurs, tyrannosaurs or pterodactyls. Um, and it's, it's just really kind of a fun, light book. And there are three is in the series, as I said. So if you like that, you can pick up that series. And then finally, I have Woof by Spencer Quinn. And um, it's a book about a girl named Birdie, a white American girl named Birdie, and her dog named Bowser. And there is a mystery. These are all mysteries. And basically what happens is her grandmother's prize stuffed marlin, which is a great big fish, goes missing from her store. And Birdie tries to figure out where it went and Bowser helps her. And there's of course nefarious goings on in the town and there's a truck following her. And so there's a lot of danger, but it all works out in the end. Don't worry, it's all, it's all good. There are a lot of books in this series. We have um, also the next series, which is about a cat and a dog. So um, Spencer Quinn's a really fun author who writes a lot of great books about, a lot of great mysteries, just overall. So that's the last book I have for you. So thank you so much for listening today. Um, I hope that you have found a book that is interesting and would like to pick one of these out. And you can place it on hold or come in and pick one up. And um, thank you so much for listening again. Until next time, bye-bye.